a dentist who can save 10 minutes in a half an hour appointment increases productivity by 50%. The procedure I'm about to show you is based on the sandwich technique that was popular several years ago. However, what I'm doing now is using resin modified glass onomer cement to bond composite resin to conventional glass onomer. This cavity classification is similar to that described by Mountain Hume. While the surfaces are the same, the focus is on the status of surrounding tooth structure rather than the size of the lesion. The first clinical demonstration is the restoration of an occlusal lesion where the surrounding cusps do not require added support. An initial cavity preparation is carried out with high and slow speed rotary instrumentation. The cavity preparation is completed by etching for 10 seconds with 37% phosphoric acid, washing with water and lightly drying with oil-free air. A suitable plastic film placed between the unset restorative material and the opposing occlusion will enable mastication to form a functional occlusal surface on the restoration. A piece of plastic sandwich or freezer bag of approximately 3 cm square is placed over the prepared tooth and dental floss is passed through the contact area at the distal margin. The film is now folded back to expose the preparation. A new generation, wear resistant glass onomer cement is inserted into the cavity condensed with a ball burnisher and excess cement removed. The film is folded back over the occlusal surface and dental floss is passed through the mesial proximal contact and tied at the buccal surface to completely envelop the prepared tooth within the film, temporarily isolating it from the oral environment. Centric occlusion is achieved by asking the patient to place the tongue on the soft palate. The next instruction is to chew lightly on the plastic film to form the occlusal surface of the restoration. The glass onomer cement will chemically cure in three to four minutes. Removing the dental floss and plastic film will expose the set restoration. An excavator can be used to remove the small amount of flash at the margins. Small occlusal restorations placed using this technique seldom require occlusal adjustment. After clearing the area, a light cured bonding resin is coated over the surface and photo initiated to protect the maturing glass onomer cement. The next clinical situation is an initial proximal lesion. In most cases, any technique other than a tunnel restoration reduces the long-term potential of the affected tooth. Access to the lesion is gained by a high-speed diamond burr from the occlusal surface, about 2 mm in from the marginal ridge. 2 mm extensions bucolingually and onto the occlusal surface will improve access. A phosphoric acid etch is applied for 10 seconds and flushed with water. Trichloroacetic acid on a perio probe is placed interproximally to reduce cravicular exudates. The preparation is then washed and dried with oil-free air. A paper point is wedged lightly in the interproximal area at the gingival margin. A piece of plastic film is placed over the preparation and dental floss passed through the proximal margin and wedged into the paper point on the cavity side. After reflecting the film, a wear resistant glass onomer cement is placed into the preparation to just overfill on the occlusal surface and condensed with a ball burnisher. The film is folded back over the preparation and dental floss is passed through the adjacent marginal ridge and tied on the buckle, temporarily isolating the restoration from the oral environment. After light mastication in a centric position, the glass onomer is left for about three minutes to set. After removal of the floss and plastic film, excess flash is removed and resin coated over the occlusal and proximal surfaces to protect the maturing glass onomer cement. Occlusal adjustment is rarely necessary in such small restorations. Check that the proximal margin is clear with dental floss. Tunnel restorations have two major advantages. Firstly, they are minimally invasive to tooth structure and secondly, they can be completed in much less chair time than a conventional class two restoration. These restorative techniques have the biological benefits of glass on cements. They are minimally invasive and extremely efficient to provide. While the techniques are a little bit unusual, they are predictable, they are fun to do, 
and you'll find that they're a great practice builder. If you'd like some more information about this technique or other videos in the series, I can be contacted on the following email or fax numbers or check out the website. And thanks for watching this video.